What's up, YouTube? It's your girl, Kiara, and I am back with another video. And if you see by the title, you're probably wondering, what am I doing? I've been sitting down and I've been thinking, what is something new I can do on YouTube that's really different that no one does? It was an idea that what if I start a series of me doing my makeup while I talk about topics, scripture, or whatever. Um, I was inspired by um, this girl on YouTube. I'm gonna put her name. Um, I was, she actually does this thing called Murder Mystery Mondays. And what she does is she does bomb makeup. And while she do her makeup, she tells stories about murder mysteries and cases and stuff like that. And for all my criminal murder cases gurus, like I love crime cases. I love action. I love that stuff. So. Her videos are so interesting to watch. She beats her face and she tells you interesting stories. So why not do something similar where I beat my face and we talk scripture? So I called it Snatched in Scripture. Cause you know when your face is beat, they either say your face is beat or your face is snatched. So I thank God for that idea cause it's literally no one on, everybody on, Insta on Instagram, everybody on YouTube that you see that bring that references you can go literally look it up i did this today any correlation with <clears throat> believer christian christ bible and makeup it is talking about whether makeup is a sin or not and whether christians should wear makeup that is all that it is um so i'm gonna break that tradition with this i believe it's actually like a god given idea and i think it's mad cool a way to connect to the beauty world and the christian world so i don't know what i'm doing I know what I'm talking about, but I don't know what I'm doing to my face. So, we're here. So I'm gonna wipe down my face first. Clean up anything. My face is pretty clean. I haven't worn makeup in days. So I'm gonna be talking about identity of Christ. I really want it to be like a chit chat, not something that's like, you know, extremely scripted and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm going to start off with primer um how did i find my identity in christ first of all the reason i did that um i was christian for a long time i was christian for like five years but i kind of just dibble dabbled in the faith i would just not really live the life like i was just lukewarm i was in ministry and stuff like that um but i found myself getting to the place where i really desire God, for real. Like, I wanted to do this God thing for real. Last year, 2018 of February, um, I was going through some stuff. And I was like, you know what, God? It's going to be me and you. Like, we are doing this. I'm going to find you. So I literally just dedicated myself to just seeking God. So I spent three months really just consecrating myself. I'm going to... I like to play with my face routine. Sometimes I'll do my eyes first, my eyebrows first, my eyes, and then my face, but I'm gonna reverse it. So I'm gonna do my face first, and then I'm going to do my eyes. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with my eyes. I'm using Mac. I was like, wow, I've been on this stage ministering for so long, and I don't even know who I am in Christ. I've been doing this thing. I've been claiming I'm Christian. I've been doing all of this stuff and I don't even know who I am. I don't know what God says about me. I don't know my calling, which I wasn't even seeking for. I just wanted to find God. I made a devotional and I called it Identity Trip. And I called it that because I was on a journey to find who I was. The number one thing I would say in finding who you are in Christ is knowing what God says about you. What does the Bible say his children are? Who are you? I got to a point, um, I was doing a fast. I named the fast identity trip. And I was doing a fast and I started to look in the Bible. God, what does scripture say about me, about my identity? What, who do you call me? What am I to I am a child of God. Like, yeah, we, we sing about it. We sing about it all the time. We claim it. 
But to come to the realization that God is your father, that means I'm a daughter. I'm a daughter. I'm a royal priesthood. These are the things that God says about me. I am a royal priesthood. I'm, um, everybody says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I was finding this, I'm chosen. Um, I'm not forsaken, I'm not condemned, I'm loved, you know? Um, I'm no longer bound. All of these things have a big part to play in your walk because you can do this whole walk not knowing who you are in Christ and you wonder why you're fighting the same battles over and over again. And I'm preaching to myself, really. Um, so once I really found that out, I started writing these things down. I literally wrote them down in my notebook and I was like, I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. And I started declaring it over myself. And once I started declaring it over myself, that's when I started to believe it. That's when I started to believe I am a child of God. I am who he says I am. I am the head and not the tail, you know? I am first and not last. And some of these things, you may feel like they're not manifesting in your life right away, but that doesn't mean that God, what God says about you is not true. And the reason why this is the foundation of your identity is because as children of God, we all have the same identity. We are all identified as sons and daughters and children. We are all identified as the bride of Christ. We are all identified as servants. We don't all have the same calling, but we all have the same purpose, and that is to glorify God and to serve the kingdom. If for whatever reason you get to a place in your walk where you feel like you're not adequate for your call, remember that God qualifies you. So I'm getting myself grounded in the truth, those truths because of the cross, um, what is said about me. That's where my foundation is. And I'm gonna get deeper into identity, um, into why that is important. So after I started to get that revelation, that's when God started to reveal to me my purpose on this earth for Kiara, for me specifically. Why am I here? I'm now using a ColourPop concealer and the number Dark 48. I got glimpses and they're called to the nations and da 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 But he started to reveal to me, literally, boom, 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 boom. And I had problems accepting what God said, because I thought, nah, God, you can never call me to that. That's way bigger than me, way bigger than me. And people confirm my calling all the time. They tell me all the time the same thing. You have this mantle on your life, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, you know, yeah. I started to get more into the mandate that I have in my life. I'm using this NYX Prime Set and Refresh and I still had problems with accepting it because I thought the mantle was too big for who I was listen if you're struggling with what God has called you and you're struggling with a believing it because you feel like the mandate is too big for you and you feel like you could never do that thing, watch God qualify you. You don't need naturally given talent to do certain things. Um, he will work it out in your favor for his glory. So I was like, yeah, God, um, <laughs> psych. But the reason why um, my calling, and I look crazy now, just hold on. The reason why the foundation that I set in who I was, not my, your identity is not found in your giftings. The identity that I have, I didn't set my identity in my giftings. Because what happens when your, your giftings don't fulfill you? You're, they do, they make room for you. Um, and the giftings that you have, they become, you know how somebody, when they're in their destiny, and they feel like their life is fulfilled, that's what your gifts will do for you. But when you're in those times of suffering and and you're in those times where you know, you're know you in a dry season or whatever, 
those things are not going to matter. What's going to matter is the original foundation that you sh that you set. Understand that, yes, we have gifts. Yes, we have this. Yes, we have that. But your first calling is to be your son or your daughter. Your first calling is to be your son or your daughter. That's what saved me. Because as a person, if you know me, and this is not to brag, but I'm really gifted in a lot of areas. And I've been in, I've been and I'm in a place where my gifts do nothing for me because it doesn't quench the thirst that I have in my spirit for Jesus. You need to get to the point where your gifts don't define your walk. That's not your identity. That's a part of it. But that's not the foundation. The foundation is what God says over you, what he speaks over you. Remember, when you get to heaven, all those things fade away and you will still be a daughter. You will still be a daughter. You will still be a son. <laughs> if you're a prophet, if you're a CEO, if you are a teacher, a judge, none of that's going to matter. When you get before the Father, remember, the Bible says that these servants, they went before the Father. It says that specifically. They went before the Father. The servants, they went before the Father. That's what the scripture said. And they said, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Have we done this and have we not done that? He said, get from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. And the revelation that I got from that is the reason why they didn't know is because the reason why they just failed at that job is because they have not had, they have not gotten the revelation that they were children first. And at the end of the day, <clears throat> they went before the father as what? As workers. Your boss is not your dad. but your dad can be your boss. You understand what I'm saying? So they missed it. They've missed that they've needed their identity to be found in him being a father and not being one to send you off in chores. Understand that is not where your foundation lies. Your foundation does not lie. Your identity does not lie in your gifts. Your identity lies in what God says about you as a dad. And some of us, some of us find that hard to believe because we think that because we're doing all this stuff for the Lord, it makes us, it makes us validated in heaven. No, you know what validates you? Your faith. The Bible says that it is only through faith that you can please God. If you're using your gifts to get your father's attention, that's not it, sis. And that's not what he, that's not, that's not how it works out here. He wants to know you as a child. That's where your identity comes from. Your father's house. And you know where your father's house is? You. You are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit resides in you and you have yet to get the revelation of who you are in Christ, you're missing something. You're lacking a, 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 an intimacy with the Father. Because at the end of the day, when I'm going through things in life, when I'm struggling with things, I'm not running to a boss. I need to run to a dad. I need to run to someone who can comfort me. A boss can't comfort you like a father can. And that's why I said, when you know who you are in Christ, aside from your calling, then you are comforted and you're safe because you've already identified who you are i can go to god about this because he said he's my father i can go to god about this i can conquer this because he said that i'm more than a conqueror i can fight this battle because the lord said that i have the power and authority to step and tread on the heads of serpents this is the stuff that you need to know because you can be heavily gifted and not know how to fight your own battles but busy laying hands on people, casting out devils. While you, on the other hand, are battling things and not knowing that the power is in you to overcome it. Wow, I'm preaching to myself. You see why identity is important? True identity is not gifts. It comes from intimacy. It comes from the word. And then when you take that word that you already know and you use it 
in that warfare. You use it in those battles. You use it in those situations. It cuts through. It's a sword. It cuts through. Still don't know what I'm going to do with my eyes, but we're going to figure it out. So here's a, a secret about identity. One thing that I learned, when you are around people who just kind of just doing what, they're, what they want, and they have not yet solidified in their identity in Christ, you can tell because they live however they want to. What happens is that people start to dislike you. Don't be like me, y'all. I got baking powder in my blue. <laughs> no. What tends to happen is that they start to dislike you because you're finding your identity. Um, you are moving in a place of more conviction. You're being more intentional about your walk. You have a purpose to do things now. You have a reason to serve now. You're doing things. The Lord is giving you ideas and you're walking them out. And people don't like that because it it's not that they're being haters. It's that they have not yet found that, that sense of purpose. So the only other thing they can do is, you guessed it, worry about what other people is doing. Now, when you know who you are, it intimidates people because they don't know who they are. They actually do have the desire to be that way but they won't sacrifice themselves to find it. And this is what I did. The Bible says in Matthew, those who lose, who find their lives will lose it. Those who live for themselves will lose their life. But those who lose their life for my sake, which is Jesus's, will find their life and have eternal life at that. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. And because you're finding that, people don't like you. Let me tell you something how powerful knowing your identity in Christ is. The reason why it's powerful, it's because one day, And the next day, I kid you not, when I tell you this man answers, the next day, one of my friends calls me and he has a ministry. This is where the identity check comes in because because I knew who I was, I was able to humble myself. And I said, Lord, thank you for this opportunity to preach. And then I said, God, if I never preach again after this, I am fine. You don't have to flood me with gigs. And that night the Lord used me. He used me quite prophetically actually. And I had a sermon written a year ago and never preached it. <clears throat> And I was going to write another sermon and the Lord was like, no, preach this one. And he texted me back after that service and he was like, we needed that word. And I never preached after that. Now, I've done little things in my church like once after, but I've never gotten another gig to preach. And I said, God, I'm fine with that because I'm not here to preach on platforms. I'm just here to serve you. I'm here to be a daughter. Some people would have thought that that was their identity the platform and they would have been chasing it. No, I wasn't chasing that platform. You know why? Because the platform does not define me. When I get off that stage, what I do by myself is my identity. What I do by myself, how I supplicate myself before the Lord, how I get on my knees before God, I get on my face and I bow, every, I give everything to him. All my gifts, when I go into prayer, I want you guys to understand this. When I go into prayer, I don't talk about my gifts. Why am I talking about? God knows them. But in that time with the Lord, I 
don't care about my gifts. I want to know what's on God's heart. I want to know, you know, what, what, what's, what's concerning him. What I, I tell him, God, seek my heart. God, I want pure heart and, and clean hands. That's a prayer a lot of people need to pray. A pure heart and clean hands. I want to be pure before you. God, purge my heart of anything that is not like you. And I don't even know that's there. That's the things that I say to God when I go to him. I cry out to him. I purge myself. And it's been hard for me to do that lately. Only a daughter or a son, like only a child, can go before the father who knows all and cry out to him and just embrace him. We need God's comfort, comfort and affection. It's the same way God wants our affection too. He wants our affection. He wants us to be affectionate with us. He wants us to show him how much we love him. Let me stop. I'm using the Morphe Jeffree Star Spray. My snatchage in scripture. Y'all, this was fun. This was a blast. And to sum everything up, your identity in Christ is you being a son or daughter first. If there's men watching this, if there's guys watching this, just so for whatever. Females, guys, you are a son and daughter first. Your identity comes from what Christ been said about you, what he's been written about you. It's not about your calling. It's not about how anointed you are. It's not about, at the end of the day, when it's you and God, it's not about the mandate. It's not about the prophetic word it's not about how many platforms you've preached on that's not your identity remember that your identity is the fact that you were chosen that god qualifies you that he's seen you fit to die for you need to know this stuff because when you are down you are not going to care about a platform. You are going to want to feel comfort from a father. So your identity, the foundation of your identity is what God says about you as a child. Remember, you are his child, you are his daughter, you are his son, and he wants to love you that way. Because when you have a relationship with the father, everything else just flows naturally. When you have to force yourself to feel like you have to do this, you have to do that in order for him to be pleased. No, just love on him, be intimate with him and your identity will fall into place. You will find things. You're more precious than rubies. You are more than a conqueror. You have power and authority. This is the stuff you need for everyday life. This is the stuff you need for everyday life. Not the stuff you need for a platform. Not the stuff you need for worldly stuff. The thing that's going to sustain your very spiritual life is in the identity of Jesus Christ himself. It is what God says about you. And remember, you are chosen. You are his child. Remember that, please. I tell this to everybody. Stop worrying about callings and anointings and fivefolds and stuff like that. No, 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 no. It's about being his child. Because you don't want to be one of those people who go before the Father on some Lord, Lord. No. I said I need my children to come to me. That is the foundation of your identity. And that that is what's important. 